Hi, my wonderful sweet babies. It's Destin Choi. So for today's video, I had to get on here and speak about the fact that cancel culture is only more accessible to fake people. Now, just to get straight to the point, you always see people getting canceled left and right, more particularly influencers, more than celebrities. And one thing I will say is this, when it comes down to the whole cancel culture thing, it was only a thing that you saw happen amongst influencers. And influencers said some colorist shit, they said some inf offensive shit about Mexicans, or they say, they say something hella offensive about, about black people. People find their tweets, they resurface, and all of a sudden everybody drags their ass. Exhibit A, the hammerhead shark. It seemed like always little black nappy-headed, I'm sorry y'all, but it seemed like always little nappy-headed girls would bully me. Like they'd be jealous or something like. Until it went corporate and got mainstream, and now cancel culture had good intentions, but then when it got too corporate, that's when things got really fucked up. One thing I will say about cancel culture is that it's stupid as fuck, but I do say that it definitely does have its dues. Cancel culture as a whole is some bullshit. Cancel culture as a whole should basically teach people that no one is untouchable, but to a certain extent, some people are untouchable, and those are the people who keep it real. For example, Cardi B is disgusting, but she's incredibly entertaining and successful. But what is it about her that people never want to cancel her? Niggas be trying it. And niggas fucking take time of my day to interview me. Y'all take time of my day to interview me, to chop shit up. Y'all make it leave. Y'all make it seem like, yeah, yeah. Coach is calling somebody else. Mommy, nigga, you fucking dumb. I don't play when it comes to my child. I don't. So don't use my kid for fucking clickbait. Ask Sex Hollywood, suck my whole dick. Suck a dick. I hope your fucking mom catch AIDS, bitch. Yo, if a nigga cheat on me, I'm be like, all right, I'm going to take him out. We're going to get drunk. I'm going to get him all perked up and everything. We're going to have a good time. Get him super twisted. Then bring a bitch around. We're going to have a threesome. And when he wake up, he gonna be like, what the fuck? Yeah, because the bitch was a tranny. Oh, so, and I drug niggas up and I robbed them. That's what I used to do. Why does she seem to always be immune to cancer culture? I'll tell you why. Cardi B is authentic and honest. She's unapologetically trash, but at least she owns it. I can use somebody else like 6 9 as an example. 6 9 beat the shit. He beat the brakes. He beat the living shit out of his damn girlfriend. So I'm hitting her. She's like, Danny, you crazy. She's crying. She's like, Danny, you're bugging. Like, it's all in your head. You're going crazy. You're going crazy. Like, this is the money's getting to you. You're going, going crazy. I swear to my daughter, like, I swear to God, like, you're going crazy. Like, you don't know. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm being the shit out of her. I'm, I'm, I'm raging. I'm like, yo, Sarah, you fucking lying. This is the same man who blatantly lied about being a gangster to sell records. And he actually admitted it in a courtroom and will even admit it in interviews to this day. And how is it that he's able to still walk around and not get held accountable like other celebrities? I'll tell you why. He took accountability and owned it. The opposite is someone like Charlemagne the God. Charlemagne the God has done some pretty heinous things throughout his entire past. And when I say his past, I'm not talking about when he was 8. I'm talking about when he was in his damn near late 20s to early 30s. Charlemagne has never really made peace with his past. And he's done a lot of problematic shit that he's never really be been held accountable for. Nor has he ever faced the consequences. In my mind, I don't know if this shit really worked. But I felt like I got horny as a motherfucker too. So she was drunk as shit. And we had sex and shit. And like... A lot of my boys was trying to come in the room and fuck her. I'm like, nah, chill out. I can't. I'm not doing that. And I'm like, let you run the train on it. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> right? so this so, is one on one. It ain't right. Yeah. So the next trains are right. So the next morning she wakes up. The next morning she wakes up, and um, we talk about it. And she's like, "What happened?" I'm like, we had sex. She said, "Okay, well, I'm glad it was you." A girl just said, "Yo." <laughs> At least you raped me. I didn't rape her. <laughs> no, I did not rape her. Said. I did not rape hey, her. If it was any of your cousins or friends that have been raped, but I you didn't rape her because me and her had every intention of having sex with each other. So then why would you put the Spanish fly? I was a freaky. I'm still a freaky motherfucker, but I was a really. I was. I listen. My Wait, whole, was she passed out while you fucked her? Nah, she wasn't like. She was like one of those drunks where. <laughs> no, listen, no, she was one of those drunks where like. She was one of those drunks where she was like. Oh, like co she wasn't coherent, but she was up. And that's why Charlemagne the God goes viral every single month and gets canceled every single month because he's done some heinous shit. And he he's one of the biggest critics of cancel culture, if we're being completely honest. And although the man is successful, he did lose his show on HBO, which was a big L for him. But let's be honest here. 
those allegations and all the horrible things he's done is going to keep resurfacing because Charlemagne is the, is the main one that says live your truth and no one can use it against you. I'll use myself as an example. I can't be canceled. And let me tell you why. Cancel culture will never be able to touch me because I keep it real all the fucking time. And that's not me trying to brag. That's just me being completely honest. I keep it real all fucking day. I say exactly what I mean and I do what I say and I mean what I say. Specifically because... I don't feel the need to put on a front and I don't feel the need to hide anything from anybody. Jeffree Star is someone that's fake. He's a good example of a fake influencer. He doesn't really practice what he preach. He gets on camera and will apologize if something racist comes to the public. You had snake belly acid in my auntie face. What? Yes, you did. Don't deny that crap. Oh my God. When the hell did I do that, girl? You did that shit a couple of months ago. You say black folk cannot wear MAC cosmetics and you splash your ass in her face. Well, maybe if she wasn't wearing the wrong foundation color, I wouldn't have to splash no battery acid. I wanted to lighten her skin tone, girl. Who, that little black bitch, Keisha? And don't get me wrong. Of course, the Grim Reaper, he, she, it, whatever this... I, I'm sorry. <laughs> whatever it is. Of course, this Grim Reaper has apologized for its, him, her, he, she actions. But at the end of the day, <laughs> Splice has still done problematic shit behind the scenes despite the apology. So is the apology even real? Got to a point where I just felt like I was being used as a black boy. I felt like I was always defending Jeffrey on Twitter. I was always going in, going in, but I've never got the same in return energy from him. He's done so much for me and I used to always like, you know, he put me in my first campaign. He's done all these things and I'm like, let me not say anything. So I was going hard on for him on twitter because i'm getting backlash but he would never defend up for me so i was really hurt and that's what your ass get for working with him bitch and that's not even the half of it jeffree star's ex recently came forth and said that this dude is actually racist towards asians which ugh. but when it comes to asians yeah you talk about asians all the time like what like like oh he needs you alone now like he do the asian accent mm -hmm. and he just talk about asians like every day. You hear stuff like that behind the scenes and everybody can be lying. But that's a big reason why Jeffree Star is always getting canceled and always getting called out for shit. He's fake. Another example is the Ace Family. The Ace Family. And a big reason why I was so able to call the Ace Family early on, four or five years ago when I first started making videos, which is a big reason why I, you know, really got into the whole talking shit and dragging motherfuckers around, is because the Ace Family were fake. And I saw through their bullshit. One of the first things I ever called the Ace Family out on was when they had this whole little quote unquote giveaway where they were telling their followers to, hey, if you want to win a chance to win a Jeep, all you have to do is buy one of our hats off of our website. Seven different designs for you guys to purchase to have a chance to win the giveaway. And they're all going to be discounted. They're going to be, you know, um, discounted hats so that everyone gets a fair chance. As you guys know, if you're part of the Ace Family, every video in the description is the website link to where you can find our hats. So obviously, in order for you to have a chance to win this giveaway, in order for you to have a chance to win a brand new Jeep, you have to be subscribed to the Ace Family. You have to join the family. And if you do not have a YouTube account, I suggest you make one to subscribe. On the 15th, guys, the 15th will be the day you guys can enter this giveaway. And just know, if you don't win the car, if you don't win the Jeep, you do have other opportunities of winning something. Yes. $1,000 or a brand new phone. So the reason why we're telling you guys today is because we want everybody to have an opportunity to collect the funds. You know, if you're young, save up the lunch money, you know, to have a chance on the 15th to enter this giveaway and have a chance to win. We love helping you guys because you guys we just want to see a smile on your face we just want to make a change in someone's life and guess what even if you don't win the jeep you're more than likely going to still get a hat because guess what you got a hat i mean you got a cheap ass cheap ass aliexpress hat but guess what you still got a hat and of course we all know that whole giveaway was full of shit because that's not considered a giveaway and what they did was actually fucking illegal that's considered a raffle you don't tell people to buy something in order to be entered into a giveaway and now look, every single week, a new story is coming out about them getting sued. Catherine's getting sued by the old skincare line that she was a part of. And now, Austin is getting sued because he ain't paid the motherfuckers that were involved in his little fighting match. So it all came back tenfold. This kind of shit does not happen to good people. Fraudulent people get exposed. Fraudulent people get canceled. Like how they get canceled and exposed all the time. And honestly, one of my biggest pet peeves is fake fraudulent YouTubers. Because I, just like you guys like watching content. I love watching influencers. I love watching YouTubers 
And one thing I will say is if you want to be an influencer or a YouTuber, don't come on here being something that you're not. You know how everybody always says you want to be an influencer, you want to be a YouTuber, be yourself. You want to be famous, be yourself. That that People don't say that shit for anything. That statement alone holds a lot of truth, particularly because a lot of people get on here being something they're not. So if you get on camera acting like something that you aren't, or if you collab with people and you act like something that you aren't, people will look at you like, huh, huh, hmm, hold up, hmm. What's this? What's this? Why are you acting like this? Hmm, hmm. Oh, wait, you were just acting like this two weeks ago. Now you acting like this? Keisha Anderson is a good example. She's fake as fuck. She's very fraudulent. Her man always putting his dick in everything but her ass. And she's fake. She acts like she's this beautiful, wonderfully goddess, this godly, this God-fearing, educated woman. But in reality, Keisha Anderson isn't what she portrays herself as because so many of her friends have even exposed her. Dead ass series. Keisha, bitch, fuck you, ho. Because you ain't nothing but a police ass bitch. You try to sit up here and act like you this happy motherfucker. Ho, you suffering from mental illnesses. Where's your medication at, Keisha? Where's your medication? Please do not ever, ever round me up, baby. Don't do it. I advise you not to do it, bitch. I don't give a fuck we're recording or whatever. You can't even produce. Not to mention, she's in a scandal every single month. It's so persistent. At this point, you may be the issue. It seemed like it was his girlfriend or whoever, allegedly. People who know why I'm doing this know exactly who it is, so I don't have to say. I ain't trying to get in a lawsuit, but I'm going to defend myself because you don't slick put my information out there. Um, so basically that happens. I send them a joint message and I'm just like, yo, like, um, this is, I don't know what y'all got going on, but miss me with that shit. I miss me with it completely. I don't want shit to do with that. Ain't had shit to do with y'all. Don't know. I'm like, what? <laughs> so this heifer, excuse me, I shouldn't call people names. This woman, um, went and screenshotted obviously the conversation we had and put it in her video on youtube girl do you you want to talk about your experience or that's your way of checking people or whatever it is you're trying to do i don't care the issue is is that you didn't completely blur out my information but keisha and her man are a whole other video for a whole other day that's another video within itself so if you're someone that's always getting outed by people in your personal life and they have receipts on you and you're always getting exposed, people who behind the scenes know some shit about you and they're all trying to expose it, that's a good example of maybe you just might be fake. People are able to come for you, out you, and expose you if you're fake. If you're if you're throwing stones living in a glass house, someone's gonna fuck around, throw a stone right back at your ass, and all that glass around your house is gonna shatter. People are gonna be able to see exactly what you're doing with all the glass coming down. And the reason why a lot of times we're so used to celebrities getting on YouTube, getting on Instagram, or releasing a notes apology saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so very, very, very sorry. I, I, I'm changing my ways. I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm educating myself. I'm sorry. Okay. Is the cameras off? Okay. Where's this fucking nigger? Give me my fucking pizza. Oh my God. Uh, tell Consuelo to come clean this shit up. That's what it is. That's how they are behind the scenes. That's their character. They're bad people. When you're a trash person, you know, the saying goes is this. Karma is only a bitch if you are. If you're a evil, problematic, no shit bitch that treats your team like shit, you treat people around you like shit, you drag and just, just, you just overall do horrible, disgusting things in your personal life, you drag out your money and you use it to control people and you use it to demolish people and you use it to intimidate people, you're going to get canceled in the, in the long run. Look at people like Harvey Weinstein. The nigga got money. He has a lot of fucking money. He's really wealthy and successful. And look what happened to him. He got canceled because he portrayed himself as this lovely heavenly producer and he he he's been not shit he hasn't been shit for the past 30 years throughout his entire career he's been a rapist he's been a bad individual he's been doing problematic shit bill cosby even though bill cosby isn't fully guilty as what the media is trying to betray him as that's another video for another day i will say that bill cosby isn't innocent at all bill cosby is incredibly problematic and has done some very shady and sh shitty things to a lot of people in the industry and he's been exposed for it so when you do shitty things to people sometimes things go right around 
The saying goes, karma is a bitch. But like I always say, like I just said, karma is only a bitch if you are. If you're not doing nothing evil, if you're doing good things and you're putting out good energy towards people, then you ain't, you're not going to deal with no smoke in return. One of my biggest pet peeves about influencers is that when they get on camera and they say, all I do is spread positivity, guys, we spread positivity all the time. First of all, positive people don't go around saying that they spread positivity. Seeing all you guys' negative comments and negative people, it was a big disappointment. Yeah. And we have to literally make sure those people do not have a chance to win. Yeah. Because it wouldn't be fair for the people who are always positive, like the people we always talk about. And yeah, if you've been following us since day one, if you've been watching our videos for a while now, I mean, you know exactly how Austin and I are. You know what type of people you know, we are. You know us, exactly. pretty much. All we want to do so. is help people and be good people. Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah, so if we see anything negative, then obviously you're in the wrong place because... There's nothing negative over here going on, exactly. literally. Positive people just do positive things and they don't expect anything in return. The same thing goes for the Ace Army who loves to brag about giving to charity. Austin's no chin, Austin's, Austin's dusty, no chin ass who stay cheating on his damn wife, always saying, guys, you know me and Catherine are always giving back. Ugh, Ace family. Whenever people do this, ugh, like putting their hand over their heart, that's the fake little, ugh. I'm sympathetic, but I'm not really sympathetic. I'm just more so trying to get you to think that I'm sympathetic so that way you can believe me and not know that I'm full of shit. The Ace family are a perfect example. They brag about giving the charity. Good people don't brag about giving the charity. They just do it. Not only that, celebrities are a good example as well. Celebrities will give the charity and then the media will go around announcing it and saying, oh my God, Jennifer Lopez just made a multi-million dollar donation to a fight cancer organization. You see what I mean here? They do stuff like that because they want everyone to perceive them as good. And if you want people to perceive you as good, then you're not a good person. The same thing goes for heaven and hell, God and Satan. I don't know if God and Satan actually exist, but I'll give you a good example. You ever wonder why a lot of people who are Christians or Catholic or people who are Buddhist do the most evil, most disgusting, most heinous things? You ever wonder that? Because it's interesting how the most judgmental people are always the people in the church. The most heinous, disgusting people, and all the tea is always in the church. It's always the nastiest people who go to church all the time. And you want to know why? A big reason why so many na nasty people go to church is because some of them generally want to change their ways. And a big chunk of them are trying to go to church because they feel bad about doing evil things. And I genuinely believe that if you're someone that only goes to church or only believes in God, and let's be honest, there's a lot of people who are like that only are religious when it fits their own benefit or their own narrative. You only want to be God-fearing. You only want to get on your knees like you about to suck some dick and pray to God as if you're just this holy being because you don't want to go to hell. And I feel like if you're only religious because you don't want to go to hell, then you're full of shit, bitch. And at this point, God should cancel you and throw your ass in hell. There's a special place in hell that is reserved for people like that. I hope you end up in the most hottest, most heatest section in hell and sit there if you're only being religious because you don't want bad things to happen to you. A good example is bums like this. People who give money to waitresses and waiters and feel the need to broadcast it on the internet. Now, let me just start by saying, it's okay to give a very good and nice tip and make your waitress or waiter or server feel good. However, it's insane when I see people generally try to record the waitress's reaction. Like they take out $100 out of their pocket and they say, hey, I tipped you. And then the waitress starts crying like, oh my God, oh my God, people only tip me in peppermint and pennies. Thank you so much. Like it's like, it's good that the lady got her tip and it's good that you gave her something. But are you really a good person just because you gave somebody some money because they're a server or a waitress and they're, in some cases, struggling? some cases, they aren't. Are you really considered a good person? There's even those people who give money to the homeless and then they film it. I don't think anyone that does that is noble at all. I think if you do stuff like that, you're only trying to show people a side of you that's, yes, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm empathetic, I'm nice, I'm sweet, or yes, this individual is so sweet, he's so polite. That's a good example of YouTubers and influencers and celebrities. You get canceled when you're a fraud. And what's even worse is some influencers and some celebrities make it worse when they get on camera and they say, okay, my bad if you feel that way. I'm sorry that you feel that way. You guys ever have somebody try to apologize to you and they hit you with that? I'm so sorry you feel that way. Or, hey, okay, fine. If you feel like I did something wrong or if you feel like I did something wrong, knowing damn well they did something wrong, knowing damn well they probably fucking hit your dog, knowing damn well they probably broke into your house and they say, well, I'm sorry you're upset. I'm sorry you feel that way. Bitch, 
at that point, don't even give me an apology. The baby is a good example. The reason why the baby was so easily canceled when he tried to address the whole homophobia allegations was because he tried to do damage control by saying, look, I'm sorry for people who felt that way, but at the end of the day, you see what I mean? It kind of reminds me of my damn dad. My dad was a good example of someone that did not know how to apologize for shit. And some of y'all could probably relate for parents who want to apologize for shit. For example, I remember talking to my dad one time, and I remember him literally saying, oh yeah, I know I wasn't in your life. I'm very sorry about that. But it was your mama's fault. It was her fault. She did this. She pushed me away. And that's when I was like, okay, fuck this nigga. And at that point, that's when I canceled his bitch ass and blocked his damn number. So that's just a good example of people who will do certain things just to make it seem like they're a noble person. But at the same time, they want to fix and stroke their own ego. So it's kind of like what I said. If you're someone like Jeffree Star, or someone like James Charles, or someone like Shane Dawson, or someone like any of these influencers like Queen or this person or that person, you're easily going to get canceled because you're fake. Let's give Queen Naja, for example. I want to bring her up because Queen Naja gets canceled, recanceled, uncanceled all the fucking time because she does a lot of problematic shit. She does have a very strong fan base, but let's just be honest. Queen Naja has said some insane, heinous shit that she's never owned up to. And it's one thing that she said that in her video. I get it. Say what you got to say. Do what you got to do. You said what you said. And at the end of the day, you can't change it. And you probably do regret it. But Queen Naja's issue was this. When people called her out on it, one of the first things she did was be deflective and defensive and say, well, first of all, one of my friends is dark-skinned and melanated, and second of all, uh, that video is old. And it's like, whoa, girl, you're being a little bit too defensive for my liking. People called you out for some shit that yo ass said. You getting mad at me because I called out yo ass for some shit? That doesn't even make any sense. You're getting mad because you did something wrong and I'm holding you accountable? That's the thing about fake people. Fake people have a big-ass closet filled with a whole bunch of shit. They have their secrets and they have their privacy. And sometimes they mix and conjoin their secrets with their privacy because with privacy, no one should violate it per se and you have you are entitled to it. But then there's secrecy to where what are you really hiding? It's okay to have secrets, but to an extent, what are you hiding? Are you hiding something because you don't want people to find out about it or judge you for it? But when it comes down to cancel culture, it's pretty much ruined accountability. It's turned into get on your knees and beg, bitch. Get on your knees and kiss my ass. Like, apologize. Apologize. That's that's what cancel culture has become, and that's pretty pathetic and sad. But all in all, I'll use myself as an example like I did before. You can't cancel somebody who keeps it 100% authentic and it's 100% real. And realistically, I got pretty popular and I got popping for calling out fake people, fake shit, and calling out people who are biased when they give their commentary on shit. That's just what it is. So, a big reason why I got on YouTube is because I was tired of seeing fake shit. That's what most people know me as. They know me as a person that's always calling people on their shit, saying this and saying that. And I'm known for the person that's ex always exposing people. But realistically, I don't really be exposing people. All I really do is point out what a lot of people don't see. I'm the, where's Waldo? Let me find Waldo. Waldo was right there, kissing somebody's ass, sucking this person's dick, and being fake as fuck. Let's call them out. That's what it is. So cancel culture has kind of polluted that a little bit because now cancel culture, it just seems like it's fun. It almost seems like it's fun. Like there's never a moral to the story at the end. If you do watch my videos and you do watch other commentators who call out the same shit I do, you would know that there's always a moral to the story. Like at the end of the day, call this person out, hold them accountable. Accountability is key in the story. But a lot of people would just cancel somebody, hold them accountable and say, okay, they apologize. That's it. We're done. We're done canceling them. We're going to move on to the next person. So... Where is the lesson here? Where does this person learn from this? You see what I mean? So that's just a good example. You can only be canceled if you're a fake bitch. Just like people who give out money to waitresses and servers and waiters because they want to get some type of social media buzz, social media press, or filming myself giving money to the homeless, or filming myself giving cheeseburgers out to the homeless. Come over here, man. We found him. I told you he was walking. Yes, the guy. You have 20 for him? This, this beautiful lady right here has something to give you. Let me give you a Aww. <laughs> this is really like a cool experiment, honestly. Have a great day, man. Yeah, have a wonderful day. Okay. You have a good day, bro. You good, man? Yeah. Alright, cool, man. Make sure you spend that $20 in a good way, alright? Alright, have a blessed life. You're lame. You're a lame bitch. You're a fake bitch. You're not real. You're fake and you're phony. And that's why people like that get called out and exposed because you want people to perceive you as a good person. You want people to perceive you as someone that's wealthy as fuck, has their shit together, and so on and so forth. And realistically, I think that's a big reason why I don't get sponsorships. If you guys notice, I used to get sponsorships here and there 
But you guys don't ever see sponsored videos in my shit. There are sometimes where I be putting y'all on some game, or I be putting y'all on to TV shows, or I'll put you on to something really cool, like a cool app that I be using, and people be asking me, wait, is this sponsored? And I'll be like, no, this is not sponsored at all. Like when I talked about stocks and cryptocurrencies and shit, people thought that whole video was sponsored. Not everyone, but a good chunk of people thought, nah, nah, this, this is not, this is too good to be true. No one's going to give out free game like this. And I was like, well, believe it, bitch, because I'm giving you free game and I'm not getting sponsored for this. I'm just giving you free game. So I don't get any sponsorships at all. And it's kind of fucked up and sad. But a big reason why I don't get sponsorships is because I've been told by brands and people who work in the industry and people who are other influencers the reason why you don't get sponsorships is because you get on camera talking shit all the time and then i'd be like oh yeah i forgot <laughs> yeah that's a good point that's why I, I i don't get sponsored but i respect that and i don't really give a fuck because if, at the end of the day if these brands don't want me don't want to work with me that's fine because i'm not going to be a fake ass disney bitch on some Hey guys, so yeah, thank you so much. And guys, please don't send hate to this person. Guys, please don't be mean to this person. Nah, no, fuck that. This bitch wanted to get on the internet, talk shit, be a colorist, be fake as fuck, be a liar, be a fraud, be a racist, be a bitch, be a fraudulent individual. I'm gonna get on camera and call their bitch ass out and I'm not gonna hold anything back. And I don't give a fuck if I'm not gonna get a fucking SeatGeek sponsor or a dumbass Audible sponsor. Fuck these sponsorships. They can kiss my fucking ass. They can go to hell too. The one thing about a lot of influence that I notice is People will be able to pinpoint and catch if you're being fake as fuck or you're fraudulent. A good example is someone like the Ace Family or people who get on camera saying, What's up squad? Gang, gang, gang. Welcome back to another video. Like stuff like that. Like that's fake. That's tacky. That's corny. And sometimes I tend to skip through stuff like that when people do that because it's just disingenuous. You ever notice when somebody's smile doesn't match their energy? That's kind of how it is. When you meet somebody and they're smiling like, and you can tell it doesn't match their eyes, you know, a wise person once told me, be wary of people who never smile with their eyes. Because if you're smiling, but you don't smile with your eyes, because people's, pe people's pupils dilate when they smile, that's how you know you can't really trust them. Because at that point, they're giving you a little fake-ass smile. A good example I also want to bring up is, I remember I did a video about the trans community and the whole bathroom situation, and people were a little bit upset about that. Because I basically said that I'm going to have to stand with majority of cis women who, majority of them, don't really agree with it. But the real tea is... I don't give a fuck and we should just take out bathrooms as a whole and for some reason a lot of people felt as though that that was very insensitive it was more so mixed reviews i got a good amount of people who agreed with me a good amount of people who were in the middle and then there was another portion that was very much like fuck you and this channel bitch i'm gonna cancel you we're gonna ruin your career and people try to tweet me people try to send me a whole bunch of videos people people try to like screen record my videos and put it on twitter and say choice tv is a transphobic smut Fuck him and his channel. Like, Stan Twitter went in on my ass, and that's a good example. And when I saw that, I was like, uh-huh, okay. And then there are people who are messaging me via Instagram saying, Choice, did you see? People are trying to cancel you on TikTok. People are trying to cancel you on Twitter. And I was like, and then there are people who are telling me, are you ever going to apologize for that? I was like, first of all, bitch, I posted that video 36 hours ago, and I'll make another one, bitch, and I'll say that shit again. So kiss my fucking ass. So that was, that was just it. That was just what I pretty much said. I didn't say anything harmful. I just said the truth. I was just being authentic and real. Because if I got up here lying, and I said what well, a lot of these fake-ass, corny influencers said during the whole Black Lives Matter thing... I stand in solidarity with the trans community. I stand in solidarity with these issues. I am an ally. I stand... People would look at me and be like, we applaud you. But then some people would be able to look at me and say, you're being kind of fake. Or I feel like you're looking for sympathy. Or I feel like you're kind of bandwagoning and profiting off of the fact that you want people to view you as somebody who's noble and an activist. And that's why I always say, I'm not an activist at all. I'm not an activist. I'm not pro this. I ain't pro that. Bitch, I'm pro myself. I'm pro me. I'm pro me all day, every day. And I stand alone. And there are times where I'll make videos people don't agree with. And I respect it. For example, I made a video talking about the homeless population, right? And I said that at the end of the day, when it comes to the homeless population, I do not agree that you should be giving them money. I would never, ever, 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 ever give a homeless person money ever again. I used to back in the day, but then I realized that a lot of them be having all types of people coming to them all the time, giving them money, giving them this, giving them that. And I see it like this. But a good example was this. People in Mexico actually hustle and work very hard. When I went to Mexico, I was seeing people having their babies like in their little 
pouches, their little kangaroo pouches. They had their babies over their damn shoulder. When I went to Mexico, people had their babies on their backs. People had their babies on their hips. And in the meanwhile, and meanwhile, they were out here selling enchiladas. They were selling empanadas. Some Mexicans were trying to braid hair, offering to braid your hair, saying, hey, give me 30 pesos and I'll braid your hair. Some of them were, of course, doing all types of other things, you know, moving weight, selling drugs. They were, you know, trying to sell pum pum, all types. Like, everybody was hustling regardless. Everybody was trying to sell something. People were trying to sell toys. I had an eight-year-old trying to negotiate with me how much he was going to sell me for a little toy figurine and I actually bought it because I had a lot of respect for an eight-year-old who's literally in my face trying to bargain and trying to sell me something and I look at that and I say what the fuck is some of y'all excuse in America who sit on your ass and be out here panhandling and shit and I'm just being honest what decisions are you making in life because I didn't been there I didn't been in poverty I didn't been broke but guess what I didn't crawl out of the mud and I used all the manure, I used all the shit that was thrown on me my entire life as manure to build myself up. And so can you. And that's what a lot of people always tell me whenever they hit me up and tell me that they love my content. They don't always agree with me, but they respect me for at least keeping it real. I don't always agree with you, but I'll still watch your videos. Lovely, she's a good example. I don't agree with a lot of shit that she says, but I still like her content and I still respect her opinions. I don't agree with a lot of shit that a lot of influencers and bloggers and a lot of people like Chrissy or Paris Milan say, especially not Paris Milan. She be saying some crazy ass shit, but I still respect a lot of her opinions and I be watching her commentary sometimes because she be saying some really interesting shit and even be, she even be teaching me some shit. So that's just a good example. You don't have to agree with someone. You don't have to like someone. But if someone keeps it real with you, you can only respect it. And that's why I don't have a lot of respect for these fake ass motherfuckers because they got on camera being something that they're not. You see what I mean? Don't be a fake bitch and people won't call you out for being fake. Don't say you're in solidarity with black issues. I stand with the Hispanic community. I stand with the black community. And then two, three, four years later, an audio clip or service of you saying all types of racist, prejudice, fucked up, homophobic shit. What sense does that make? You're a fake bitch. You don't practice what you preach. You say one thing, then you say another thing, and then behind the scenes you're doing something completely different. How that work? How does that work? You see what I mean? That's a good example of people who are more accessible to cancel culture. Don't portray one thing and then be something else. That's called wearing a mask. And what's the point of living if you had to live a lie? So anyone that gets canceled, like officially officially canceled, like people like Laura Lee and people like, what's that girl, what's that bitch name? Jaclyn Hill and all these other people who do fraudulent and fucked up and fake shit, like the Ace family, they all get what they deserve in the long run. Because even if people do get to escape cancel culture, you can't really escape it per se. Because eventually, like I always say, like we all say, everything that comes in the dark Anything that happens in the dark always comes into the light. So if you're doing fucked up shit behind the scenes and you're saying fucked up shit and doing evil shit to people, it'll all come back tenfold. It's like the boomerang effect. What you put out is going to come right back at you, but it's going to come slamming at you ten times harder. So that's pretty much how I see it. Everything moves with energy. And if you move with bad energy, that's going to come following you. Anytime you see a YouTuber who's always in some shit, always going back and forth, always going on Instagram live, maybe because you're attracting that kind of shit, maybe because you're allowing certain people to have access to your energy, and that's why every fucking week you see that same YouTuber going on Instagram live, fighting with this person, allowing yourself to be involved with this person, because a lot of these influencers secretly don't even like each other. A lot of them are fake, but then they talk shit about each other, and then they want to fight behind the scenes, and then they act like they're cool in front of the camera. And then they fight in real life or get on camera and fight. And people would just be so surprised. Like, whoa, I thought y'all were friends. How the fuck did this happen? That's called being fake. Don't be fake. Don't share fake smile with people. Don't give people access to your energy. And be honest. If you want to be an influencer, don't worry about being canceled. Don't sit up here and say, I can never be a celebrity because they'll just cancel my ass. Don't worry about that shit. Just be honest. That's why influencers always say, be yourself. Or guess what? People will call that shit out. For example, you don't be seeing the Ace Family vlog, how this no chin bitch just be disrespecting his wife, or how Catherine and Austin really, or how De'Ara and Ken were always acting awkward in front of each other and the energy, because energy just doesn't lie. People are able to pinpoint things out and eventually people will be able to call you out on some shit. So when people say, well, you should be careful what you say because this is just, I don't gotta be careful with shit. Cancel culture ain't touching me, bitch. I'm gonna be completely honest and I'm gonna stand in my shit. And if I do get called out for some shit and I don't agree with it anymore, I'll come all the way back and I'll say, you know what, y'all right, I'll take full accountability and I'll definitely let y'all hold me accountable and definitely 
not fuck with me anymore if you don't want to, and I respect it. But overall, if you move with good intentions and you do things with good intentions, you really have nothing to worry about. Even in real life, even if it's not on social media, if you aren't doing evil, shitty things to people, don't worry about trying to get revenge. Don't worry about trying to get at people because the whole the whole being real things applies in real life. If you know you're a good person and you know you do good by people, don't worry about revenge. Let the universe handle it or if you believe in God, let get, let God handle it. Accountability is growth. And the one thing fake people don't like is growth. Everything always comes to the light. So that's pretty much all I got to say. I'm not going to get canceled ever. And if people ever try to hold me accountable for some shit that I said, I'll say, hell yeah, bitch, I said it. And I'll say it again. Or hell yeah, bitch, I said it. And I'll move on. And I'll accept it. And I'll apologize if I'm actually sorry about it. But that's pretty much it. Fake people get what they deserve. And fake people get canceled. But that was that. I hope you guys pretty much enjoyed it. Please be sure to let me know what you guys think about this entire scenario. Let me know if you guys agree with me on you can only get canceled if you're fake as fuck. Because you never really see real people or authentic influencers getting canceled if we're being completely honest. So just let me know what you guys thought about this topic for today. Just let me know. Let me know via email. Let me know via my comments on, on YouTube, my DMs on Instagram. And yeah, please be sure to follow me on Instagram, YouTube. Follow me. Make sure you guys stream my podcast everywhere. Join my Patreon. It's as low as $2 if you guys are interested. And yeah, that's that. Thank you guys so much for listening. Time out is over.